Hi everyone, this is a medium difficulty GMAT DS question. I will classify the question as a 600 to 650 DS question in number properties. Lovely question. Is y an integer the question? Let's quickly jump into understanding what the question is. The question is asking is y an integer? It is an is question. So, the answer to the question should be an yes or a no. The answer will be yes if you determine that y is an integer. If y is a number such as 3, if it is a number such as minus 11, it is a number such as 0, it is a number such as 84, all of these are integers, then the answer will be an S. If y ended up being, if you know for sure, y is a number of this kind, 1.43, 7.92, minus 8.27, square root of 26, cube root of 9, right, all of these are non-integers. So, you know what is an integer, what is a non-integer, when the answer is yes, when the answer is no. The data is sufficient when we have a conclusive yes or a conclusive no. If the answer to the question is an yes or no, conclusivity, definitiveness of the answer is what we are looking at. Start with statement 1 and see whether that will give us a conclusive answer. Is y an integer? The question it says y cube is an integer. The approach that we are going to take is a counter example. What is known is that y cube is an integer. So, in all of these things, the trap is many times we will start assigning value for y and not assigning a value for y cube. Let us follow what the statement says. It is saying y cube is an integer. So, do not pick a value for y, pick a value for y cube. Approach is counter example. So, I am striving to see if I can get an yes and a no. If y cube is equal to 8, then that translates to y is equal to 2. Is it an integer? The answer is yes. Is y cube an integer? Yes. As mandated by statement 1, we have taken y cube to be a 1. Did we get an answer as yes? Yes. Let us look at a counter example. Counter example, just add 1, 2 or subtract whatever you like, right. Let us say y cube is equal to a 9, y cube not y square, y cube is equal to a 9. Is y cube an integer? Yes. What is the value of y? y is the cube root of 9. Cube root of 9 is certainly not an integer. The answer to the question, if y cube is equal to 9 is a no. In both the examples, was y cube an integer? Yes, 8 is an integer, 9 is an integer, y cube was integer in both the examples. First example, we got an S as the answer. Second one, we got no as the answer. Statement 1 is not giving us a conclusive answer. So, if 1 is not giving us a conclusive answer, rule out answer options A and D. So, I write statement 2 alone, see whether that is going to help us. Just 3y is an integer. Again, the question is, is y an integer? Approach I am taking is a counter example. As I mentioned with statement 1, pick a value for 3y, do not pick a value for y. The trap is when we pick a value for y. 3y is an integer, example 1, 3y is equal to a 6, y is equal to a 2, is it an integer? The answer is yes. All that the question says is 3y should be an integer. It is not saying what y is, it is asking you to figure out what y is, right. St example 2 I am going to take is basically add a 1 or subtract a 1 from what we had in the last example. 3y is equal to 5, y is equal to 5 over 3. Is 3y an integer? Yes. Is y an integer? No. Previous example, when 3y was equal to 6, the answer was yes. When 3y equals 5, answer is no. In both cases, 3y happened to be an integer as mandated by statement 2. Statement 2 gives us a no, gives us an yes. We have a counter example, which means 2 alone is also not sufficient. Rule out answer option B. The easier part of the question is done. Now, this is where we are. y cube is an integer, 3y is an integer. How do I make sense out of it, right? In the examination, if you can't figure out, basically see what your gut says. It says C, go with C. If it says E, go with E. Or you can't toss the coin because GMAT does not let you carry coins inside the examination hall. So how do we go about it? I'm going to make a hypothesis and let's see whether that makes sense. If y cube has to be an integer and 3y also has to be an integer, that's not possible unless y is an integer. In a way, a grand hypothesis. How do I establish it? How do I prove it? I am going to use a counter argument, not a counter example, counter argument to basically come to this. Let us take a look at it, right. Let us take 3y to be an integer from statement 2, right. I am going to pick such a value for 3y, which will make y to be a not an integer. Take 3y to be equal to 5, the, the counter example that we had in statement 2. So, y happens to be a non-integer. 3y is an integer as mentioned in statement 2. You pick such an example. And we pick such an example where y will not be an integer. Now, y is a fraction. If y is a fraction, obviously y cube cannot be an integer. y is given as a fraction. There is no way y cube can be an integer. But statement 1 wants y cube to be an integer. So, if 3y is an integer, 
unless 3y becomes such a value that y is also an integer, y cube cannot simultaneously be an integer. So, 3y is an integer, y cube is an integer, it is possible only when y happens to be an integer. So, if the two statements are to hold good, then we can establish that y is an integer. The answer is a conclusive S. Statements together have helped us arrive at the answer. Choice C is the correct answer to the question.